more likely you come into this video because you want to know how to deal with your burnout or are you dealing with burnout i'm just going to say this straight up i am not a licensed therapist but i do do a lot of research and i've been doing a lot of things in regards to handling my burnout in the last couple of months and recovering from that and also avoiding that as well hopefully you can get some information in the video and also anyone who has dealt with burnout or those individuals on, on the internet in the community talk about burnout come to this video and put in your comments and let me know what your comments of what this video kind of like entails and see if it's like on the right path so first topic first thing on the list like what is burnout burnout not just a figure of speech anymore. It's actually been declared a legitimate medical diagnosis by the World Health Organization. It is officially defined as a syndrome, a syndrome resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully <laughs> managed. And there are three main symptoms. Here they are. Feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion, increased mental distance from one's job or negativity and cynicism related to one's job and reduce professional effectiveness. Check, check, and check. Oh, oh. NBC News medical correspondent who is very invigorated. So this is a very interesting definition of things and the symptoms that's behind work and so on. So for the most part, yes, it's about pretty much being exhausted and overworked or feeling depleted or depersonalized from the work job that you do. And from listening from other, you know, experts in this particular field, in this particular topic, they talk about how it's not just about work, but how it expands out into other parts of your life. So you can think about how you feel in all aspects of life for your mental, your body and your spirit and so on. So this is, you know, a very important definition to understand and some other things that I came across that kind of essentially really helped me to identify the three types of burnouts, which I'm going to mention pretty soon. But before we do that, you know, I got to upgrade this computer. It essentially, it's been five years since I actually upgraded this computer. So let's look at that as we go over these different three types of burnouts. So at the very beginning of this year, I wanted to figure out what was burnout and how to get productive, essentially moving out of this burnout. So one of the things that did come up and I was wondering if it would essentially help was this book by Ali Abdul, Feel Good Productivity. And pretty much as I was reading through the, this book, I found these three types of burnout and it pretty much resonated with me. And I found that other experts and previous experts as well had this same idea of, this, of these terms. And the first term that we want to go over is overexertion burnout and pretty much what that means and pretty much what that entails is that you're doing too much you're taking on too much on your plate and that's pretty much it and one of the things i was doing last year was definitely taking on too much on my plate i was probably doing more than 20 plus things inside and outside of work and that was pretty much way too much things on my particular plate now, i would say it was very self-inducive and it was you know for a reason and and so on which i'm going to go into the next reason which is the misalignment burnout so misalignment for the most part what that means is you know you're doing the wrong things and expecting a particular outcome if you you're expecting to get water but you go into the desert you're not meeting that goal when you go into the desert for the most part that lets you know where to look misalignment is like that and one of the things i was doing last year was setting goals and i was doing things um expecting a particular output these particular goals as i was you know in my work or outside of work for my business and stuff and i invested time into then it gave me the expected output that I wanted. And that's where misalignment came into play. I was expecting an output based on the input that I was putting into, but the output didn't really give me exactly what I wanted, the reward for the most part. That's, I hear about this a lot in regards to burnout in the tech community that, hey, they meet this particular goal in regards to tech or going to FANG or something like that, or they get the compensation that they wanted, but then there was this empty feeling for the most part and it's because this misalignment of what they feel internally and what they actually want externally is pretty much that and we're going to go a little bit into how to how resolve that pretty soon but the last one i want to go over the third one which is depletion burnout and this is pretty much within the name of it depletion you know you're not having any energy so far for the most part you're just go 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 with no breaks and no rest a lot of people don't really know what rest looks like for them i didn't really know what rest really looked like 
for me last year. I was thinking that I was getting rest, but it wasn't really rest. So essentially, yeah, I wasn't really taking care of myself. Didn't know when to take breaks and I just kept on go, 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 go. This is going into the last bit of this video, which I'm going to go over into how I'm avoiding these particular types of burnout now and how I feel like I'm recovering and I've recovered almost completely from burnout. So let's get into that. All right, let's get into the last part of this. How am I dealing with overexertion? What are the things I'm doing to alleviate that type of burnout? So one thing for sure, you know, this is very important to understand is doing less allows you to do more. So what that pretty much means is that instead of doing 20 plus things within a week, I'm going to be focusing on three to five things within a week. And if I have other things that I have dreams and aspirations for, I put those into a column that, you know, I can handle later on. But until I'm done with like meeting my goals in these three to five things that I'm focusing on within a week, every single week, then I'm not bringing anything else from those dreams and aspiration columns. So that's pretty much how I'm dealing with that portion. But the last part of handling overexertion burnout is, you know, setting boundaries in the ways of not taking on more work than I need to. Not only that, I'm also setting boundaries by limiting my time at work or outside of work by saying, hey, this is it, this is the time that I'm you know, heading out, or this is the time I'm gonna be stopping. So pretty much an example of this when I'm outside of work is that, hey, I'm not doing anything in regards to YouTube or any side of my business after 10. And that's just what it is, it's like, I need to get my rest, I need to get my sleep, and I'm prioritizing my well-being to ensure that I wind down and I'm getting the proper rest I need to get rest and this is very important to set your time and set your rest and be you know consistent with it there are times where I can go beyond that but I might not if I'm in the realms of you know conserving my energy I'm trying to do that and I'm trying to set those boundaries with prioritizing my well-being rather than work and you know saying no to when I'm at particular capacity if I don't have the bandwidth then I'm not gonna overwork to essentially you know appease anyone else and this is a lot with like people pleasing for the, for the most part but for the most part yeah saying no is a very huge power because you know you don't want to go into this nut um, burnout and you just keep continuing to, continue to say yes 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 uh, you become ineffective over time and it's not going to be good for you over time it's also not going to be for the other person that you're trying to help out and you overbooking yourself all right let's go into alignment how i'm essentially handling that type of burnout alignment pretty much like i kind of discussed this already but it was this thing in the book of um, feel good productivity and pretty much they're going over nice goals and pretty much what i got out of it is that hey you might have an output that you want you expect but really focus on your inputs and having fun with you know the goal saying goals that are near term that are, you know you can do on a consistent basis and reward yourself for being consistent rather than focusing on what the output might be the end point and just focus on having fun with that and those are essentially what nice goals are and i'll probably put up an acronym of what that means and also like i'm changing my mindset and this is the main point of like of this misalignment is changing my mindset of being grateful rather than resentful for the things that i'm not achieving yet and this is kind of what i was going over at the very beginning of this year it's like being grateful for being here being grateful for being able to achieve my goals and continue to work towards those i'm definitely changed my mindset since the beginning of this year about being grateful for being able to do all this stuff being consistent being able to go forward and so this i think you know that mindset change that mind switch has like definitely changed rather being super hard on myself you know it's, it's not about being super hard on yourself it's about all about joining the process during the journey that's how i'm fixing this and misalignment piece all right let's get into the last portion of this was is depletion depletion burnout how i'm dealing with that and how i am you know re-energizing myself so i can continue to do these things on a consistent basis i kind of already mentioned like time blocking for the most part but you know i just want to reiterate that time blocking is very important so time blocking out when you're doing these things and these activities that you're trying to do to achieve your goals but also time blocking out your rests and stuff so 
I think that's really important to understand is that you don't have to go back, 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 back and do it like every single minute of the, of the day, but have some free time just where you're not doing anything. I mean, you're not really doing anything, but you might be doing something that is fun for you or re-energizing you. Whether it's playing basketball with some people that you've been, you know, playing basketball with, which I have. And one thing I did notice that really re-energized me during, last, like, towards the end of last year was hunting. And um, now I'm adding on top of that fishing and playing basketball. And I think why why does these things really play into re-energizing me is because there's a community aspect of it. When I'm going hunting, I'm going hunting with other people. I'm talking with them, talking about things that's going on with me, or it's, it's just like a, a therapy session for the most part. And every time, you know, hanging out with any people or something like that, I think of it as a therapy session. I'm able to talk with them during these activities and I think that's really important there's the thing in regards to like the social aspects of community and keeping you accountable so like on top of like you know they're keeping you accountable but they also re-energizing you if you can find that community that can re-energize you and find the things that you know you guys are doing together for the most part I think that's really important because it really helps with like that rest um, because you know there there are people who do drain your energy, aka kids. Um, sometimes when they don't get their way and having tantrums. But hey, you have other people who are giving you energy as well. So bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And pretty much, I want you to know what to get out of this is it's all about finding times where you're going fast and you need to slow down and rest. That's how I kind of like grasp all these particular concepts. Is that hey, there's gonna be times where you can sprint full force and so on but there's sometimes you just need to take a walk and rest or sometimes even sit down and take a water break and then you can jog yourself up again and hit into the sprint and that's why I'm you know right now I'm jogging myself up maybe I hit to a sprint but I'm also scheduling when I'm gonna be hitting that walk so I can get that proper rest so I hope you guys are getting that proper rest and I'm gonna finish out by hitting out that proper rest by doing my thing going fishing see you in the next one